Hello everyone, I am Dr. Priya John, Watson Glom Convalescent Fellow from Hyderabad, India. I am going to speak about the pathogenesis of Anka associated vasculitis and the prevailing evidence. Antineutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies are the autoantibodies which are directed against the cytoplasmic antigen present in the primary granules of neutrophils and lysosomes of monocytes. These antibodies are primarily directed against myeloperoxidase and proteinase 3 of neutrophils. And antibodies are primarily IgG immunoglobulin class. So how ANCAS are produced? ANCAS are produced second to the inciting factors which might be immunogenic or non-immunogenic in nature. The genetic polymorphisms and infectious agents constitute the immune factors, whereas the drugs and the metal flex silica constitute the non-immune factors. Genetic polymorphisms of HLA-DP and Serpina-1 gene are associated strongly with PR3-associated vasculitis. So what happens when ANCAS are produced in the body? There is loss of tolerance and development of autoimmunity. The CD4 T cells become autoreactive and trigger the B cells to produce aberrant ANCA production by plasma cells. And secondly to the infectious uh, organisms, the pathogen associated molecular patterns and the damage associated molecular patterns, they activate the toll-like receptor which bind to the neutrophils. ANCA by means of uh, FC gamma receptor engagement bind to the neutrophils MPOPR3 by FAB segment and activate the neutrophils. The two facets of the neutrophil activation are the production of C5A factor and the production of neutrophil extracellular traps. C5A when binded to the C5A receptor activates the alternative complement pathway which causes the deleterious effects of the down downstream events by means of membrane attack complex. And the neutrophil extracellular traps, which are basically a mechanism of uh, entrapment for the uh, bacterial or any other pathogen in the body, which when produced in excess, they cause endothelial damage and deposition of MPO and PR3 damages the vasculature. The two theories which summarizes the pathogenesis of uh, uh, ANCA associated vasculitis are autoantigen complementary peptide theory and the molecular mimicry theory. According to the autoantigen complementary peptide theory, whenever there's a pathogen in the body, there is an anti-idiotype response by which anti-PR3 antibodies are produced by the B cells, secondly to the immune response to the original CPR3, which is produced uh, by the transcription of endogenous antisense strand of DNA. The anti-PR3 antibodies, which are produced by the B cells, they bind to the neutrophils, causing neutrophil activation. According to the molecular mimicry theory, there is a molecular similarity between the bacterial levison FIMH and lysosomal associated membrane protein 2, producing anti lam 2 antibodies. Anti lam 2 antibodies, in a similar fashion to anti PR3 antibodies, bind to the neutrophil, causing further neutrophil activation. The neutrophils activated, they get primed up by the pro inflammatory cytokines, causing the bursting of the neutrophils in the release of uh, toxic granules and reactive oxygen species, which damage the vascular endothelium by means of fibrinoid necrosis. This is a cartoon which summarizes the pathogenicity of ANCA associated vasculitis. Upon uh, infection and the release of the pro inflammatory cytokines, the neutrophils get primed up by TNF alpha, lipopolysaccharide, and interleukin 18, which causes further recruitment of, uh, uh, recruitment of neutrophils and uh, further production of ANCA. And it's a vicious cycle, causing the bursting of the neutrophils in the release of neutrophil serine proteases, which damages the vascular endothelium by means of caspase dependent, uh, uh, caspase dependent apoptosis. And there is a defective uh, regulation of T and B cells in the ANCA associated vasculitis. So there is defective production of uh, T regulatory cells and B regulatory cells, resulting in the aberrant production of antineutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies. Moreover, NET, which is produced, triggers the B cell production by activating B cell activating factor and B lymphocyte stimulator. The evidence uh, regarding the pathogenicity of ANCAS are mainly derived from the animal models. The famous mouse model by Zio et al. documented that MPO mice, when immunized with murine MPO, and when injected to the immunodeficient mouse, caused severe necrotizing glomerulonephritis. The other model, which uh, showed that test and control MPO knockout mouse, when immunized with the murine anti MPO antibodies and the bone marrow cells, the test mouse developed necrotizing glomerulonephritis when encountered with the neutrophils. And the rat, when immunized with the human MPO, they cross-react with the rat MPO, and the rats develop severe necrotizing glomerulonephritis. 
and uh, the roles of different cells are shown by different mice models. The role of neutrophils as effector cells are shown in a wild type mice model, which are depleted of neutrophils and by means of injecting anti-neutrophil monoclonal antibodies, which when injected with anti-MPO bodies, there is no evidence of uh, uh, necrotizing glomerulonephritis. And the role of cytokines as the propagator cells are shown in a mice model uh, with anti-MPO when incubated along with the lipopolysaccharide and mice without lipopolysaccharide. The mice with the lipopolysaccharide had severe necrotizing glomerulonephritis when compared with the mice without lipopolysaccharide. And the role of complement as a sustainer is shown in a mouse model which was de uh, depleted of C5A and when injected with anti-MPO bodies, there was no evidence of necrotizing glomerulonephritis. Coming to the human uh, model evidence, the in vitro incubation of MPO and PR3 with the prime neutrophil showed degranulation and generation of reactive oxygen species and depth of the cultured endothelial cells. Coming to the role of complement in ANCA associated vasculitis, the neutrophil activation releases C5A, which when binds to the C5A receptor, activates alternative complement pathway, produces membrane attack complex, which damages the vascular endothelium. The C5A also recruits further, uh, uh, further neutrophils and these neutrophils further release C5A setting up the amplification loop. Coming to the role of neutrophil extracellular traps, which are basically a defense mechanism to entrap the pathogens in the body, but there is excess of production of net in ANCA associated vasculitis. Nets are basically an extracellular network of DNA scaffolds decorated with the granular components, histones and the cytoplasmic proteins. How, ANCAS, how NETs are implicated in the ANCA associated vasculitis. NET is shown to trigger the adaptive autoimmunity, uh, thereby the autoantigens are presented to the antigen presenting cells. So the interaction between the NET and the antigen presenting cells is said to cause uh, T and B cell dysregulation. Along with this, there is a decreased degradation of NET in ANCA associated vasculitis by means of decreased production of deoxyribonuclease, which is supposed to degrade NET. And there is decreased production of anti-NET antibodies in ANCA associated vasculitis. NETs are uh, pathogenic in causing endothelial injury by means of histone dependent cell cytotoxicity. It causes thromboinflammation by means of platelet addition and coagulation. And chronic necrosis is associated with the chronic fibrosis of the organs. So to conclude, ANCA associated vasculitis is a complex interplay of anti-neutrophilic cytoplasmic autoantibodies, neutrophils, which subserves the function of both effector cells and target cells of autoimmunity, chemokines and cytokines, which subserve the function of uh, the propagator cells, complement as sustainer cells, along with the T and B cell dysregulation. Thank you for your patient hearing.